Hello, this is Billy Core from the Nostalgia Mall, and we're back once again with another computer that I got in Knoxville back in February. And this one's actually not a gateway. This is a Dell. A Dell Dimension XPS T550. This dates from about, oh, I'd say 1999, maybe early 2000. I've always liked these... Uh, beige, uh, tall, uh, Dell Dimension Towers. I actually got two of them, uh, in this lot. Uh, I got this one along with a Dimension 4100, which I wound up giving to, uh, LGR. But anyway, this is the one that I decided to keep, uh, mainly because it has ISA slots, which may come in handy. And I already added this Made in the USA Dell sticker, uh, from Geek and Spiel. Case does need a really good cleaning, though. This is not the original uh, drive that was in here. It had a regular CD-ROM drive, but it's actually in this 486 gateway now because it needed a CD-ROM drive, and this is the only computer I could get it out of. So I stuck this DVD-RW drive in there. Hopefully it'll work. I have not tested the system yet. It's missing a few necessary parts that we will install momentarily. Go to the back, and we'll see one of the missing necessary parts is the video card. So we will have to rectify that. But we got PS2, mouse and keyboard, two USB 1.1 ports, serial and parallel. And we got a sound card, which is a uh, Turtle Beach uh, sound card. One of the really good ones. Hopefully it'll work. I had one in my... Uh, Gateway Select that I got back around Christmas that gave me some issues, so hopefully I have better luck with this one. And a dial-up modem, I think, in one of the ISA slots. So we'll go ahead and uh, unscrew this. Uh, these side panels on these Dells are always kind of difficult to remove. There we go. All right, going handheld for this. You can see we're missing our uh, RAM, but I have a stick we can easily put in there. And there's the AGP slot for our missing video card. There's our uh, sound card that I'm interested to try. Even got a uh, PCI RAID controller card in here, actually. That's kind of interesting. And the dial-up modem, which is actually in a PCI slot. I stand corrected on that. And we've got one ISA slot. You can't really see it. It's a little dark. There we go. Well, yeah, there it is. Still got our original hard drive. Uh... Presumably, it still works. We'll try that. I am going to put an SD card in here, though. And we've got a ZIP250 drive, believe it or not, which is unplugged from power for some reason. There's our floppy. And this is a, I believe, a 440BX based system. And the Pentium 3 is a slot 1 Pentium 3. Those are always uh, kind of cool. Presumably that CMOS battery is long dead, but I have a replacement. Okay, quick look at the uh, parts we're going to add. First we got our SD card adapter. Here's a video card we'll be adding, which is a ATI Rage uh, 128 Pro. From what I've seen on Dell's website, this is apparently one of the video cards you could have gotten with this system, so I figured we'd put that in there. These are good video cards anyway. Got a stick of PC100 256 meg uh, RAM and a 3COM network card, which will probably go where the modem is. Alright, let's get started. Okay, first we'll go ahead and put our uh, RAM in there. 256 ought to be more than enough. Alright, 
There's a nice firm click. And the CMOS battery is in my shirt pocket. And pop that out of there. Pop this new Energizer in its place. And that's taken care of. Now for the video card. Actually, I need to go find a, a screw for it. <laughs> Alright, found a screw. Go ahead and pop this in here. Keep in mind there is a metal bar in the way. <laughs> In this case, off camera, of course, we'll be getting a uh, good, good cleaning. There we go, video card is in. There's a screwdriver. I'll probably wait and uh, install the network card and SD card later because I'm wanting to see what is on the uh, hard drive here and we'll keep it hooked up to this uh, card here, this uh, RAID card. But now that we've got memory and video card, which is are both necessary for this computer's operation, I think we can go ahead and test it. Okay, we're ready to test it out. I actually have a Dell Beige Quiet Key keyboard to use with this. This did not come with this particular computer, but I'm assuming that it probably did come with one of these keyboards. Found this at a Value Village in uh, Charlotte a few months ago. So I want to wait and plug power up to it just in case it tries to power on uh, when we plug it in. That way we can get it on camera. So. They made a loud noise, but there is a uh, amber light that lit up on there, so here we go. All right, we got a signal. It's trying to boot into uh, nothing right now. We need to put in our CMOS settings. All right. Time is uh, 2.27 p.m. It's not January 1st, 1990. If it was, I'd be uh, only a month old. It is April 2nd, 2024. Now for a rubber dome keyboard, this is actually not bad. I will turn on legacy USB. Huh, the uh, escape key is not working. Well, we'll just save the settings and see what happens. See if it boots from that hard drive on the uh, RAID card. Not sure what size drive it is. Guess we'll find out. Now that's interesting, and that's interesting too, but not in a good way, because <laughs> we are missing VMM32.VXD, that's, that's not good. <laughs> so I think the hard drive works, but the, uh, 
Windows install is uh, horribly, horribly broken. We'll try one more time. I would like to at least save this uh, Dell splash screen for when we uh, reinstall. Ooh, registry checker, huh? I mean, it's never a good sign when it has to check the registry, but it looks like it did fix something. Maybe we can boot into it now. If we do boot into it, we'll probably only have VGA level uh, video. Unless this had a Rage 128 Pro in it before. But there's a number of video cards this computer could have come with. The Rage 128 Pro being one of them. Glad I had it in my stash. Ah, uh, doing that again. It's a loud hard drive, but it is a quantum fireball, it looks like, so that doesn't really surprise me. It'd be a shame if the escape key on this keyboard didn't work, because I, I like this keyboard. <laughs> I'm not sure why there's a... IDE RAID card in here. I don't know if that means the onboard IDE is broken or... Uh, it's still trying to fix that registry. We'll give it one more chance before we call it quits or at the very least try to boot into safe mode. I'm thinking this is a 20 gig hard drive. Uh, this must have this must have a completely destroyed registry. <laughs> I don't know if I've seen a Windows registry this broken before. So I think we'll just give up trying to boot normally and see if we can maybe at the very least get into safe mode. Oh, that wasn't quick enough. Whoa, whoa. Uh, did it do that before? Oh, no. Never mind. It's... <laughs> We're back here again. It was it looked like it was trying to load the uh, sound card driver. Sorry for the beeping. I just wanted to make sure that we got into that menu. Hmm. Yeah, Hi, Mim is not happy. Windows has stopped. Ugh. That's nasty. Control delete's not working. Uh, when there's some dead keys on this quiet key keyboard, that would be a shame because I like this keyboard. Maybe at the very, very least we can boot into com into a command prompt and see what all's on here.
Okay, do a directory command. Okay, I'm definitely backing up the logo.sys file. Hmm. See when these files date from oh 99 2000 2001 2002 so this is a pretty old windows install it's a shame it's no longer functioning <laughs> and i guess while we're at a dos prompt we can test some other of these keys oh, qwerty works Okay, the main uh, key seemed to work. I just don't know what's going on with that escape key. Maybe something needs to be cleaned or needs to be worked a little bit. But anyway, I'm going to go grab a floppy disk and see if I can back up that logo.sys file. Well, it looks like we also have a bad floppy drive. And this is one of those annoying ones with the weird face plate, so I don't know how I can go about replacing that. I mean, it could just be clean, but I don't like doing that. Doesn't sound very good either. Oh, I just tried a different floppy disk. It seems to be working. So maybe it's a bad uh, disc, which is peculiar because I was using that disc the other day and it was working fine. Let's try this MS-DOS disc real quick, just for added assurance. Okay, that works. Right, we'll try this yellow one one more time. What do you know? It works now. <laughs> Maybe the floppy drive just needed a workout. If that's all it is, hey, I'm fine with that. So let me uh, try to find another disk to uh, put this logo.sys on. Okay, I got our logo.sys file copied over. And I think that's pretty much as far as we can go with this installation. It's the whole thing's shot. It is shot. <laughs> but, you know what? No big deal. We got drivers. We've got SD cards. We have we can get this going again. So, let's put this back down over here and do the rest of our upgrades. Now that we know everything seems to be working. Okay, I'm going to see if we can run this without the... Uh, IDE adapter here and see if it can work with the onboard because I'd much rather do that and just save this for a this card for another computer that needs it more Let's get this modem out first since it's probably going to be easier and then we can get a better hold of that other card. There's no sense keeping these old modems, but here it is. It's a Promise Ultra 66. Wouldn't say it's a RAID card, maybe, but may come in handy for another computer. Of course, we might be putting it back in here. Who knows? Go ahead and hook up the SD card. And I'll put it in this top slot. Because you can't plug anything else in this slot anyway. Get 
Get this IDE cable in there. Actually, we need to unplug it from the hard drive first. And can we do this without taking that front plate off? Uh, yes. And this goes back in the uh, primary IDE channel. That I'm hoping works. And I can plug this up. Okay, and uh, I need Molex. Can I get it out of this hard drive <laughs> without taking the faceplate off? Okay, I did indeed have to take the whole hard drive out to get to the Molex connector, but we got it. Hoping this will fit. Yeah. This metal bar is kind of getting in the way. Enforcement. Let me just take this bar out. I don't even need it anyway. Oh, wait. We are going to have to put this elsewhere because <laughs> this CPU uh, bracket is too large <laughs> for it to fit. So, how about between the video card and sound card? Be moving the sound card. One thing, this is kind of a big heat sink. Okay, I had to rearrange some of the cards, but I think we got it in there. So next, we need to add our network card. Speakers back up. Put it where the modem was. The classic three com PCI cards. These are Always such good cards. All right, let's hook it back up and see what happens. Let's put the keyboard back over here, which we may be replacing, unfortunately. All right, SD card adapters lit up. That's a good sign. Means it's at least getting power. All right, picked it up, it looks like. I do have a previous Windows 98 install on here, so we'll see if it tries to boot into that. All right, I think we're good to go to install an OS. 
Okay, we're going to actually use a CD I haven't used in a long time. This is the Dell Product Recovery CD for Windows 98 Second Edition. Presumably it'll work on this computer. And it pretty much automatically installs Windows 98 Second Edition without much uh, user prompt. It does not install any drivers or anything. I think it just installs a bare copy of 98SC with some, maybe some OEM information, but that's about it. You have to bring your own drivers with you. All right. And the DVD RW drive seems to be functioning just fine. Dell Product Recovery. Welcome to Emergency Recovery. This program recovers Windows 98 operating system. Let's move the mouse over here, actually. Drive. Now I do have a partition with files and games on it. I hope it doesn't wipe that out just for convenience sake. It's copying the Win98 files over. I'm going to let it run and do its thing. Alright, just spit out the CD. We will complete the recovery process. Good news is it looks like it was only mentioning Drive C, so maybe my data partition on this drive has uh, been preserved. That way I don't have to copy everything over again. And I still say the Windows 95 uh, version of the getting ready to run Windows for the first time screen is more exciting than this. I think it's going to do the uh, standard Windows hard drive detection. No, we're going to get the uh, mouse lesson from Windows 3.1. <laughs> that's, uh, that's bizarre. And unfortunately, we don't have a working escape key, so we can't Can't use this. <laughs> okay, I guess we're gonna have to uh, <laughs> take this uh, mouse lesson. <sighs> I'm clicking the... Did not know Dell uh, did this. Well, because we got a bad escape key, we can't uh, get out of here. Oh, it has the Windows 95 icons, though. Ok. 
Okay. Uh, Packard Bell did it better. <laughs> exit for, for for love of everything. Exit. Okay, regional settings. I'm in the United States. U.S. 101. ready to continue with setup. I'm just going to do all the standard Windows 98 driver stuff. Nothing special here, really. And I thought things were going uh, too well. Uh, we finally encountered our first real issue. Windows 98 finished installing all the drivers, did the final restart, and now whenever we start, we get a blue screen of death. And I've tried booting twice already, and it's happened both times. And I don't know what's causing it. It's some kind of driver. So, yeah. It, I'll uh, start by t taking one of the PCI cards out and see what happens. I think I found the problem. We have a very, very bad stick of memory. Look at all the errors it has found so far, 22,424. That is not a healthy stick of memory. I tried to install just a standard copy of 98 off of a regular CD without the Dell stuff, and it was having uh, not the same issue, but some other issues, so decided to run mem test, and here we go. So that stick is bad. I'm going to try this 128 meg stick. We'll be downgrading a little bit, but you know what? I think 128 will work just fine. So, yeah, let's get this stick of RAM out of here and toss it. Oh, it's shot. It's all shot. Okay, looks like we're already doing a lot better with this other stick. By now, it would have... Uh, had thousands of errors on the other stick of RAM if we were using it, so I think we're probably in the clear now. So I think what I'm going to do is, off camera of course, since you already saw it, is use this D Dell Recovery CD again and just start from scratch. All right, we are finally successfully installed. Also using a different keyboard now with a functioning escape key. And it kept all my files as well on the other partition, just as I'd hoped. And we even got the uh, Dell logo and the OEM uh, info in here. Device manager. Oh yeah, it's gonna need uh, everything installed it looks like. Let me find my uh, USB flash driver disk and get that installed so I can hook that up to it and get the drivers on here. Alright, we'll stick this disk in here. This is probably one of the greatest uh, modern inventions ever made for Windows 98. At least I don't have to replace the floppy drive yet. <laughs> All right. All right, rebooted. Let me plug my flash drive in here. hard to do it when you have to plug it into the back, but front USB ports weren't really a thing yet. Now I do not want to drop this, this is a tiny flash drive, there we go. Simple as that. Here we 
go. This is supposedly the uh, sound card driver. I don't know if this is the right one or not. Uh, we shall see. Okay. Looks like we have to uh, do it manually here. OSR2 glue. Huh. Let me try doing this through Device Manager. Again, I don't know if this is the right driver or not, and I don't even know if this card's going to work properly or not. Okay, that's a good sign. Doesn't need it. Need the uh, Windows 98 CD. Well, just pointed to that instead. <laughs> it seems to have uh, done it. Maybe. Okay, it's not dead. Don't know if this will give us DOS drivers or not. Sound Blaster Pro emulation, okay, that'll probably be it. Also, I forgot to plug the uh, speaker up. I had to move it. He's copying some more uh, stuff, it looks like. Alright, do we get the startup sound? Yes, we do. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now let's go back to our flash drive and install the rest of the goodies. There we go. Uh, not sure what this one is. And of course it didn't open it automatically. Uh, some something for the sound, some kind of speaker test, which is not necessary. Okay. This should be the video driver. Hopefully it'll work. Uh, of course, we got to do it manually. Do it through uh, Device Manager again. What? You mean that wasn't the driver? Yeah, gotta be kidding me. <sighs> That does absolutely nothing. Well, looks like I gotta do some more driver hunting. That's kind of annoying. This is a uh, Rage 128 Pro, but I guess it must be just different enough to need a different driver. 
Uh, so I get to do some hunting down. Or I might just go ahead and install the network card because I think I have a driver for this card on my server. Now I just gotta find a disc for it. All right, I found the right driver thanks to uh, Phil's Computer Labs website. There it is right there. Let's see, do we know how many uh, RAMs it has? I have the best grammar, believe me. Let's see. Options, Direct 3D, OpenGL, I ain't gonna tell me anything. All right, we'll do DX. I'm also gonna bring the phone closer to the screen. There we go, we're at a higher resolution now, so. All right, display uh, five megs of memory, that can't be right. But this may be an older version of DirectX, it probably needs updating, so I'll do that later. First, I wanna see how uh, DOS gaming is on here. I turn up the volume a little bit. I'll run it from my uh, network. Adlib emulation is not the worst. Definitely way better than the uh, and Sonic Soundscape crap. <laughs> Only thing is, I think it's a little bit lower pitch than I'm used to. But it kind of adds a little bit of a charm to it. Just cycle through different, different songs. Okay, the sound effects have disappeared. I remember this happening on the uh, Gateway Select. And then when I would load Jazz Jackrabbit, well, not getting any sound anyway. I remember I'd go into the level and it would uh, just freeze up. You know, we might be uh, putting a Sound Blaster 16 in here. Okay, there's the sound, but not out of the woods yet. I think the problem was when I would exit. No, that, that worked. So it's doing better than the Gateway Select was with this. It's just Sky Roads acts a little bit funny. For some reason, the sound effects just disappear when you open a level. May try a couple of other games. May or may not keep the sound card, I don't know. I mean, this computer does have an ISA slot, and it's always good to take advantage of that. Let's open up uh, the Jill of the Jungle. Seems to work fine. Looks 
said the ad lib emulation is not perfect, but it's still so much better than that insonic soundscape. Okay, that instrument sounds a little uh, unusual. How better sky roads would work in uh, DOS mode. Let's try that out. I just have to copy it to the uh, C drive. Oh no, wait, I forgot I've got the uh, the D partition with all that stuff on there. I did load the Vortex stuff, so... Oh. God, I can just go here. Okay, the sound effects are freaking out. Can't even get the keyboard to work. Oh yeah, it's not happy. Yeah, Sky Roads does not like the sound card. <laughs> I'm sad to say. So, I don't know if I'll be keeping this card or not. I may, just to give it a little character. Or I may not, just keep things uh, a little more tolerable and easier to use. Okay, I updated to uh, DirectX 9C, and let's see if this will uh, give us more accurate information. Yep, 16 megs of uh, video memory, that, <laughs> that sounds a lot better than 5 megs, so. Yeah, I hear you, floppy drive. You exist. Congratulations. Well, one thing I will say about the these All Real Vortex sound cards is they have really good MIDI. So let's uh, not play that. <laughs> let's uh, give it some uh, Passport. Sounds really good. <laughs> Almost tempts me to keep the uh, Turtle Beach in here, but we'll we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. Whatever I do will probably be done uh, off camera. See, I think next thing I need to do is give this computer a good exterior cleaning, and I'll do that off camera. All right, I did the best job I could cleaning it. I Worked and worked on these spots with a uh, magic eraser, but I think they're deep down on the plastic. I just can't get them out, but 
Still looking better than it did before, especially got a lot of the clingy dust off of here. So, I guess that's about all there is to show on this computer. Seems like everything is fully functional now, and we've got ourselves another working computer. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off. Thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Mall. If you like what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook and X. You may also support me on Patreon if you'd like. Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off.